Good morning guys and welcome to another brand new weekly vlog. This is week number 11. My name is Amy Astrid and I vlog every single week of my life. Normally I spend my time in London but this week I'm visiting family in Norfolk so I think we're going to be here most of the week. We've had a fairly slow start to the day. Well, I say slow, I just mean we've both done a lot of work, haven't we? Yeah, a lot of work. Um, I filmed an ad and stuff, but we've got a fun afternoon planned. I'm actually going pottery painting for Mother's Day. My mum and my sister were working yesterday, so we're going today. But then Charlie got jealous and said he wants to do pottery painting too, so we're going early so that he can do some pottery painting on his lunch break. <laughs> but first things first, I need to pop to M&S and get some Mother's Day flowers. These ones are cute, but it says rose and lily bouquet, and I remember that I think lilies are toxic for cats. My mum has a cat. Flowers are quiet, but mum's not here yet. So Charlie and I are just about to make a start. I have chosen to do a butter dish. And I don't really know why, because I don't currently use a butter dish at all, but I just thought it'd be quite cute. What are you painting? I'm painting a little, um, what I'm saying, a little spoon brush. Yeah, it's a little spoon brush. brush. <laughs> spoon rest. A spoon rest, That's which is so good cute. for when you're like cooking. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Getting it all over the side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you guys know how much I love to cook, so this will be useful. That's true. These are all the paints, actually. So I'll explain it to you because you've not been here before. Mm -hmm. So basically, you've got these sponges, mm -hmm. and you need to get it a little bit wet. Mm -hmm in here and then like wipe it down it doesn't need to be wet it just needs to get off any dust or anything like that you don't want the dust to get stuck under the paint then here are your paints they've also got loads of tools over there like writing tools and sponges if you want like a spongy kind of effect on it and then on here you have to pay attention to the color on the top not the color of the paint because when they put it in the kiln it comes out a lot brighter so it will look like this this is one coat, this is two coats, this is three coats. So they recommend three coats for every colour. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Fantastic. Cool. What are you going to paint? I don't know. I don't know yet. I might just have something. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to think. <laughs> so what do I do now? Just like dab it the sponge over. Yeah, just make sure there's no dust on it. It actually feels really weird to be in here like painting for myself and not for an event. We've done a couple of girlies IRL events in here and they're always so fun, but I've never actually got to like sit here and just do it for myself. I'm trying to come up with a colour scheme. I really am quite drawn to this one. I like that a lot. And I'm thinking maybe, I don't know if that might be a bit too dark. Maybe this and this. For my butter dish, what do we think? Oh, and that. That's quite pretty, I think. Quick progress update. I have so far done two little swells. And Charlie has painted his whole thing blue already. I've written spoon me. <laughs> butter dish complete. I've been very stressed about the time, but it is actually done. Charlie's spoon rest is also finished. How's <laughs> it? Lovely. My sister's done a cupcake plate. <laughs> and my mum has done a little heart vase. So all round, success I think. Good job. That was so fun, but now I am absolutely ravenous. They used to do sandwiches and stuff in there, I swear, but they don't anymore. But the cake was lovely, but I'm so hungry. So I've stupidly not eaten anything yet today. So, we are actually going out for dinner tonight, we're going out for curry, so I don't want to overdo it, but I am going to pass away if I don't eat at the moment, I think. Oh, will you? I think so. Like, panic stations, I feel like I can't even really see anything. So we're going to go to the supermarket, and we happen to be near the village that I grew up in. Um, so that's quite funny, because it's going to end up being like the supermarket that I always went to as a teenager and haven't been back to since, so... All supermarkets are the same really, aren't they? No. No? No, there's levels to this game. Are there? Yeah. What are the levels? Um, well, do you know what? Controversial, I think Waitrose isn't top level. I agree. M&S is top level. And so is Morrison's. Uh, I have a soft spot for Morrison's. You do, yeah. I think Morrison's... M&S takes the top spot for me. Where I... Well, where... I sort of, Not well. I have a shop there because it's so expensive. But I, where I my parents it. live, we used to have a Morrison's. Yeah. And I think oh. it may be one of those things that, do you know when you do something for a while and then it just gets taken away from you? That's the road I used to live down. 
it's part of like what you like to do. Yeah. Yeah, Morrison's got taken away. Oh. It was only there for like four years. That's very sad. And then it left where my parents live and oh, I was like, this is criminal. Morrison's I don't think Morrison's is low tier. I think Morrison's is like, for me, Morrison's is like second tier. One thing I will say is foreign supermarkets are top tier. Sometimes, yeah, but they are very fun. Right now we're going to a Budgeons. Charlie seems overly fond of Budgeons. I, I quite feel like completely Budgeons. A different one. I quite like Budgeons. It's 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 quite good. It's better than like Tesco Express, Sainsbury's local. I think it's a better I think it's just a different selection. The selection was a bit rubbish actually in there. I think we've gone too late in the day. But so what did you get? What are they? Bar crispy coated barbecue peanuts. How are they? Pretty slow to be fair. <laughs> Good morning. Well, it's actually the afternoon now. I had a very bitty morning. And also, I forgot to take the camera out when we went out last night. We went to an Indian place called the Spice Lounge in Norwich. It was fantastic. I had a chicken korma. I had pilau rice. I had mango chutney and a poppadom. And it was fantastic. Um, I've been fancying a chicken korma for so long, so I was very pleased to get a really good one. So yeah, today is Tuesday. Um, I got up quite early, did some work this morning. And then I had to take my car to the garage, because basically my brake pads have worn down, so I need new brake pads, but they didn't know whether it was front or back, it's the back. And then I also, the screen in my car is broken, as in not like the windscreen, like the like electric screen, but that means that I can't connect my phone through anything so I can't listen to any music so it's driving me absolutely insane so I need to try and get that fixed as well but apparently this place can do that so we're gonna have to take that back to London um but it's fine the brake pads are more pressing issue I hate car stuff and I hate spending money on car stuff because it is always so much money and it's always so unexpected and it makes me feel like I hate when tech stuff goes wrong as well because I'm like oh my god you've got one job like the car I'm like oh my god you've got one job please just go just drive from place to place safely yeah, spending money on car stuff is genuinely like my least favourite way to spend money. Also, I just had to pay my insurance, which is mental as well. It's nearly doubled in the last year. And when I saw the number, I, I like was almost sick. Anyway, so I went to the yeah, went to the garage, got my car looked at, then I went to my mum's um, because in about six weeks we're actually going to Florida. I'm going with my mum and my sister for the first week, and then Charlie is coming out in the second week to join us for a week as well. Um, but so I just went to mum's to try and do some planning for that, very exciting. I feel like loads has, I think I've said this in one of the vlogs before, but loads has changed since the last time I went to Florida. Um, so I'm sort of trying to get to grips with it all. I used to go quite a lot, I used to go almost every year when I was at uni. So that's a fantastic way to spend my student loan. And so I really felt like I knew how to get the most out of it, but actually a lot has changed and also Previously, I've always stayed on site, well not always, not when I was a kid, but like since I've been an adult and booked the trips myself, I've always stayed on site. Whereas this time, we're staying in a villa, which means I can't get a dining plan, so the restaurants are going to be a lot more expensive than I'm used to as well. Which is obviously absolutely fine, I'm so excited to be going, but it's just like, I need to figure out what the best plan is. So basically had like a business meeting with my mum about the best strategy for Florida. I'm also going to spend my birthday out there, which I'm very excited about. But now I'm on my way back to my dad's to pick Charlie up. He has taken a half day from work because we're going to the theatre to do something very exciting. We have come to Norwich Market for lunch. I don't really come to the market very often, so I don't really know what's best to get. But Charlie seems to be having a good time having a look around. I have heard really good things about a lot of food that you can get on the market, but I've just never, never really delved in, even when I lived here. This place, Bodega, comes very highly recommended from one of my friends, so we might try it out here. Right, I went for, this is called the Lasagna Del Rey, and it is a lasagna sandwich. I think there's fried pasta in it. <laughs> That's mad. And Charlie, you're a bit backlit, but you went for, was it the knuckle sandwich? The knuckle sandwich. And how is it? Mm. Lots of like cold cut meat and stuff, isn't it? Salty, but slow. Good. That was your first Norwich Market experience, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm impressed. And we need to be at the theatre shortly, so I just thought we'd come in here quickly and eat it before we then carry on with this afternoon's exciting activities. I'm really excited, guys. I don't know if I've mentioned. Can you hear that? I've got someone in between my teeth, but. 
que aguante ver. I don't even know if I'll be able to include this, but basically Bonnie and Clyde is on at Norwich Theatre Royal this week. Bonnie and Clyde is one of my like my absolute favourite shows ever. I saw it so many times when it was on on the West End. Um, I went for my birthday two years ago and that was the first time I'd ever seen it and I was like obsessed with it. And today we've come here to interview Bonnie and Clyde, like the people playing Bonnie and Clyde. I'm so excited. But I didn't expect a concert while I was eating my lunch. They've got a cafe inside the theatre now. It's lovely. I've got a Biscoff iced latte. This looks sensational. Mm. Oh my god, there is literally like Biscoff at the bottom of it. It's so good. Here is the cast doing like a press photo shoot for a Norwich newspaper and I'm hiding undercover because it is raining and I really don't want to ruin my hair. Charlie's just taking it all in. <laughs> Say that every Tuesday now. It's so weird that they're just cutting about in their costumes. <laughs> so, what is your name and who do you play, please? My name is Alex James Hatton and I'm playing Clyde. I'm Sam Faraday and I play Buck Barrow. Lovely. Bonnie and Clyde is based on a true story, as we all know. How much inspiration have you taken from that true story for your character? I think the majority of it is, you know, the, the story in the book is pretty pretty factual in comparison to, to what actually happened and that's the material we've got to work on so I think I think a lot of it is is pretty um, substantially correct isn't it I'd say yeah I would say for Bonnie and Clyde you know you can actually go back and you can see the research and it is there uh, for Buck and Blanche it's not as much there I mean but we do have Blanche's diaries so we can sort of yeah you can go back and you can refer to that but then it's also remembering this is a musical yeah and there's an artistic license so even if you look at the film and then you compare that to the musical, like there are differences. Yeah. And there are differences from what actually happened, like how many crimes maybe were committed to how it's portrayed in the musical. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And what is the most challenging thing about playing Clyde to start with? <laughs> stamina, I think. I think vo vocal stamina. A lot of this crying, shouting, <laughs> screaming, <laughs> singing, singing high stuff, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> low stuff. So I think it's... Um, that's been the biggest challenge. And also trying to do justice to a real story, it's like, it's really important, I think, as much as um, it is a musical and, and there is that element of like athleticism for us to have to keep it up. Yeah. Also trying to do justice to what was what was true and that depression in America at that time is, is key as well, I think. As well as those kind of big, loud, shouty moments, there are some really like nice, quiet, like intimate moments in the show as well, aren't there? Well, that's the thing, it's like, it's it's a play with music, you know. Yeah. So and, and we approach it like a play rather than sort of like like a regular musical kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, and there has to be a lot of truth and a lot of sort of commitment from us to play those scenes correctly. Um, and also like you know, eight shows a week, matinee, even like going from two a day, yeah, and yeah. and still having to stir them emotions up. And you know, props to Nick with his directing. It's kind of. He allows the actors to be very organic, yeah. so it's not a kind of show where we're told to sort of stand on numbers and deliver it in this particular way. Yeah. It's this is your space, this is your box, and you get to play within that. You know, Great. Um, obviously there are still some boundaries there, but that then allows maybe for one performance to be slightly different to another performance because yeah. myself or Alex or Katie or Catherine would, would go to play a scene slightly different, yeah. um, but still always ensuring that you keep the truth of the piece. Yeah. What is your favourite moment in the show? My favourite moment is watching this one. Oh, hey. <laughs> no, side of the stage. Keep at it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> side, side of the stage. I, I've, I've said it from the get-go, actually. Um, I, I have a couple of favourite moments, but one of my favourite moments, and for this interview, uh, I'd say, it's when um, he's topless and he's in the bath. <laughs> so it's getting better, isn't it? <laughs> no, he's singing a song called Bonnie. Yeah. Um, and you were just mentioning before about these intimate moments, and it's one of the most beautiful moments of the piece. Um, it's not using, you know, desk work and mics and, you know, it, as, as amazing as the soundtrack is and Frank Wildhorn's music, it's just Alex the ukulele, the band do come in on it, but it's just, it's a real precious it's moment, moment I think. Yeah, it's one of my favourite moments, but I think, I think, um, oh, thanks mate, yeah, I nice. think um, having... And yours is mine with... Well, no, so I was going to say, <laughs> no, I was going to say, at the beginning of the process, I, I had... I didn't really know what my favourite moment was because I was still kind of finding my feet. But actually, we I feel like we've started in one of the scenes earlier on in the show. It definitely feels different every day, like the way we approach it. And I, I yep. love 
I love that with you. I love coming into that scene and being like, oh, this is going to be fresh tonight. It's going to be new. So that's the moment I look forward to every night in the show. And I actually, I also look forward to singing Bonnie in the bath because that's just yeah. a really nice, chill, kind of like sentimental side of him that I don't think the audience get to see as well. So that's nice. Yeah. That's a, a really nice moment. Did you have to learn the ukulele? I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I play guitar. But I don't really think that helps that much, to be honest, because it's half the size and yeah, it's a bit yeah. Scary, yeah. So, yeah. Most people are like, oh, you'll be grand. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, well, okay. thank you very much. Thanks, thank you. Um, Cheers. I think that's everything for me. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I just got to do that. That was so fun. I've obviously interviewed like several cast members from loads of different productions now, but it never gets less cool. I think as like a real theatre nerd like growing up and also still now it is just like the coolest thing I could possibly do and I feel very lucky to have the chance to so yeah we're gonna go into the city for a bit and have a look around some shots and then we're meant to be going out for dinner I still feel so full from that lasagna sandwich but it was very good but we've got a couple of hours still so hopefully I'll work on a bit of an appetite in the shops I've seen lots of people talking about Elm online, so I want to go and have a look. <laughs> this tea towel is very funny. <laughs> so this one is so random, why do I actually kind of love it? Oh, they've got these Little People Big Dreams books. These are amazing. I saw these when we were working on the Christmas gift guide for Girlies IRL. I saw these. They're like children's books, but it teaches you about like the kind of childhoods of people who have gone on to do amazing things. Oh, wow. And Frank, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, who else have they got? Harry Houdini. Oh, who's the, um... Iris Apfel. I actually don't know who that is. Frida Kahlo. They're amazing. I love those. Look how tiny this sushi jelly cat is. I'm losing it. Oh my god, there's like a games cafe in Norwich now. I want to go. That looks so fun. We have come to a restaurant called Gem in Norwich. It's right by the station. The station is just over there. You can see it, but you can't because it's not in focus. But my dad bought Charlie vouchers for here for Christmas because he highly recommends it and he specifically recommends the mixed sheesh, which is what I've got and what you've got actually as well, isn't it? It's stunning. It looks so good. Why don't you try it? Go on. Apparently that's garlic sauce, which I'm very interested in. 10 out of 10. Good. Oh, this looks fantastic. We are now in the theatre watching Bonnie and Clyde. It is the interval. I love this show. I don't know if I've mentioned, but I have also just bumped into like everyone I've ever known in my life, including my old drama teacher, my old music teacher, um, one of my best friends, uh, everyone else I've ever met. And that is what I get for coming to the theatre in Norwich. Kicking off the morning with a girlies IRL call with a brand. Very exciting stuff. I got this little outfit off TikTok shop and basically I thought it was just a pair of flared leggings but it turns out it's a whole bodysuit and when I first got it out of the packet I was like, oh god, what have I done? But actually, it's so comfy, it kind of slays. I don't have a bra on right now and it's doing a good job. It is doing good job. Now on my way into the city, I'll be up with some of my friends who live in Norwich for a coffee. I don't know if I'll film anything because they don't do social media and I always feel strange putting people who like don't choose to put themselves out there publicly on my platforms. It feels like I'm like taking the decision away from them. So um, I tend to avoid it, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm very excited to catch up with them. I've actually bumped into them both separately <laughs> uh, just while i've been like in the city over the last couple of days so funny living in london you don't bump into anyone or it's so rare because london's so big but living in norwich i've bumped into my grandparents i've bumped into like some of my best friends and it's so yeah it's so weird it's quite nice actually but yeah so i'm just on my way in the galley's irl meeting went really well this morning um we have got some events in the works for like August, September, which is cool. Oh, I need to remember when the Mean Girls dates are in September, actually. Must, must not double book Girlies IRL. But also we have a couple of potential events now coming up in April, which is in like three weeks time. So 
we're gonna see by the end of the week if that's something that we are gonna be able to pull together and still actually give people enough time to book tickets. So we'll see. The Girlies IRL is so weird because like, did I ever think I'd have an events company? <laughs> no, but I do really love it. It's really good fun. Um, I think particularly obviously running it with four of my best friends, like the meetings are always really good fun we have so many ideas and like it's so fun to get to work with people in such a different capacity to normal like normally a brand will come to me and be like can you post a picture and i'll be like yeah what do you want um which is great fun i love doing that and i wouldn't like to just do the event stuff because i do really enjoy creating content but it is actually really fun to occasionally be like thinking about something that's actually happening in real life IRL if you will um, it's like a nice change of pace and I like like seeing everyone's actual faces rather than just their like profile picture when they come to the events it's lovely but yeah I really need a coffee today I feel like I cannot wake up please excuse the hair guys I've got a lot going on this week and I can't lie to you in the middle of the day I thought I was having a panic attack so I went and had a bath <laughs> Um, and now, and I wash my hair. Now it looks like this. But we're gonna have a little cozy evening on the sofa, watching Love Is Blind: The Reunion. And when we saw my mum, my sister earlier in the week, my sister gave me some Tony's Chocolate Only Easter eggs. So this is, I think, an assortment of different flavours and I'm very excited about that. Good morning, we're going on a very important mission. You never know what vehicles we're gonna get in the driveway at my dad's. Today we've got multiple vans. So reversing out of here is gonna be interesting, but I've, I don't think I like hot cross buns, right? And everyone always gets so angry at me when I say that and they always say, but have you tried M&S? Insert their flavour here. Um, my answer is always no, I haven't tried the M&S ones. But I've heard so many mixed things about what the best ones are. So today, I'm going to put all those rumours to bed. I'm going to go to M&S. I'm going to find all the hot crust buns I can. And I'm going to try them. So that the next time someone says to me, you don't like hot crust buns, but have you tried the M&S? Mm, I'll be able to say yes. And either I still don't like them or yes, and they're stunning. But I have a feeling I'm still not going to like them. How do you feel about hot crust buns? Well, this seems very formal. This is an interview. This is an interview. And anything that I say, maybe given ev in evidence in court? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about hot cross buns? No comment. Do you think they're worth the hype? No comment. Have you ever tried an M&S hot cross bun? No comment. If you had to choose an M&S hot cross bun flavour, what would it be? No comment. But off the record? My client has prepared a pre-prepared statement. <laughs> oh, has he? What's he said? The client would like to say he likes hot cross buns, but they also make him feel quite nervous. Nervous? Why? Sometimes they're a bit too strong. Strong? They're a bit too hot, hot cross bunny. Okay, fair enough. And it, does your client eat hot cross buns toasted or not toasted? My client will not be making any further comment in this interview. Okay. I don't like it when people eat them not toasted. It makes me feel <laughs> uneasy. Should we get hot cross buns and then put ham and cheese in them and see what they taste like? God no, I, you can, but I'm. This is a this is a scientific experiment, and I will not be um, meddling meddling with the results. Oh, won't you? No. <laughs> oh my god! Look at this little cow Easter egg. It's so cute, and the puppy. They look like they've got proper fur and everything. Oh my god! I would never be able to eat that. I'd feel so bad. Flossy the Highland cow, I love her. My plan has actually been quite thwarted, guys, because all they've got is luxury fruited, which I'm pretty sure I won't like, apple, which I am allergic to, and blueberry, but I thought they had like chocolate ones and stuff. Oh, they're here. Okay, fine. So we've got extremely chocolatey and then extremely caramelly. I've come to B&Q to meet my granddad. Look at the size of this B&Q. It's absolutely massive. There is so much wood in here. I feel very out of my depth. It smells like a DT lab. That's cool. It's too much choice. Yeah. 
see this is the sort of thing that I think I want in the office uh what's it called paneling but I I don't really like it when it's flat like that I think that looks too modern I really like it like this when it looks a bit more like period vibes Bridgeton vibes you know I've just stopped for some petrol and Charlie thinks he accidentally just stole two Malteser bunnies so he's he's gone back into the supermarket not the supermarket the petrol station to take them back oh have they just let him have them or did he pay for them here he is the big thief I'm a big thief have you got them did yeah you, did they let you have them or I've did you pay them. for them you paid for them good did I give you the code pass we just tried to get a car wash, but it's not working. So we've got Charlie to the rescue, who is about to jet wash my car. <laughs> Even though I know I'm not going to get wet, for some reason I'm convinced that this is going to go wrong. <laughs> Here we have a man learning, to, learning how to use a jet wash. There we go. <laughs> that one looks like it's working. Ooh. He's got the brush out now and he looks like he's taking it very seriously. Not me, boyfriend washing my car. <laughs> Look, there's soap and everything. God, he's doing such a good job. Look how clean my car is now. My hero. <laughs> he's even on the wheels. I'm so impressed. 10 out of 10 would recommend getting yourself a boyfriend. Only a good one though. You don't want a dead weight boyfriend. I've been promising Charlie a walk around the Norfolk Broads the last few times we've been here. What? Oh, sorry, car's locked. Um, and we haven't gotten around to it. So I finally come to Whitlingham, um, which is just a really nice broad to walk around. But the car park is completely empty and it's making me a bit nervous that I might not be allowed to be here. I don't know. God, it's so pretty at sunset, actually. Wow. That one just had its, like, head in the water, bum in the air. And I just missed it, but it was very funny. Off she goes again. You catch that fish, girl boss. God. Oh, her little tail's wagging. I don't know what that means. Me neither. I don't know if it means the same as dolphins. Oh. <gasps> They're both going for it. Oh, I do really like swans. I don't think I've ever walked around Whitlingham in the evening before, but this is so nice. Is that they're doing a handstand competition? No, I could do it longer. That'll be us in Florida. I bet I could take you in a handstand competition. Well, let's put a belt on. What are we betting? Hmm. I have to think about that. All right. He's got a speedometer up on his phone. <sighs> and he was trying to get it to 10 miles an hour. Oh my God. As someone who had an asthma appointment earlier, that was not a good idea. Oh. How fast did you get it? Nine. Nine miles an hour. God, that's pretty good actually. Well, we have left Amy's dad. Um, we've so checked out of our hotel. We've checked out of our hotel for the week. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was five stars on TripAdvisor. If you're watching that, Amy's dad. Hello. Um, it is Saturday now. I nearly just elbowed you in the head. Um, last night we went to a like American style diner called Zach's that I used to go to all the time as a teenager with my mum and my sister and her friend but then we ended up being there really late so then we started driving back to London got about an hour out of Norwich and Charlie went there's a premiere in seven minutes away <laughs> so we stopped and stayed the night in a premiere inn which was lovely actually I love a premiere inn but spending a week in Norwich has been good um we're just very tired and we thought do you know what instead of driving late at night only cost us 30 quid each. I thought that was an absolute bargain. Yeah. But yeah. Oh my god, so last night when the camera died, we were trying to tell this story about when we had arrived in Norwich late at night the, <laughs> the week before. Um, and basically, it was like the middle of the night. It was like one in the morning or something like that. Charlie had been out for his first day in an office in how long? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. And then he'd also been to the pub afterwards. And then I had been at events that day and we were both absolutely shattered. And then we had to drive to Norwich. So we got to Norwich at like one o'clock in the morning. Charlie had been asleep in the car. I obviously had not because I had been driving. And then basically- You might as well have been. 
Did I get us safely <laughs> from A to B? Shut your mouth. Triggered. <laughs> And then basically, when we got there, I have a key to my dad's house, but it was just in my car, like, loose. So I said to Charlie, would you mind grabbing that key? And he decided that then would be the perfect time to try and put that key on my key ring. And I was, like, so tired. And it was, like I said, 1am. My dad was already in bed. So I was like, no, like, d that doesn't need to happen right now. Can you just pass me the key? So he passed me the key, but I was so tired and so was he that it dropped in between the um the console the yeah the console and my seat but because the car was really full because we were doing a girlies irl event in norwich so i had loads of cans of malibu to put in goodie bags behind my seat i couldn't move my seat and i couldn't even see the key because it was like a singular key that had fallen underneath so i had to get out get everything out from behind my seat put it just on my dad's driveway move the seat around get back in the front of the car and then as i got back in the front of the car um obviously i like put both my knees on the seat so that i could try and like peer down between the seat and the console and in like looking down that way i headbutted the steering wheel right at one o'clock in the morning in like a residential area charlie then goes you just honked the horn or or you just what did you call it just beep the horn beep, yeah beep the horn and i was like yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got that bit thank you it made me jump out of my skin woke my dad up um who then was like i swear they've got a key and yeah it just was like not a very smooth end to the journey but it was very funny and then the next day my dad was like did you honk your horn at one o'clock this morning? And I was like, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, this is the end of a week in Norwich. I'm gonna end this vlog here. We're now gonna, we might go for a little walk around Thetford Forest because that's where the hotel is. And then we're gonna head back to London, get unpacked, get sorted, ready for a new week. Um, and so this will be uploaded tomorrow. Sunday, yeah. So if anyone suggests Things to look at in Costco because we are going there next week. We are going to Costco next week. Charlie's got a membership and now I've got a membership card as well. Not what, me, what me spouse. <laughs> yeah, what Basically, membership? When you get a membership for Costco, you also get, a sp you, ca you can give your spouse a card. So I have a spouse card. Not me, Costco spouse. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to Costco next week. I'll bring you with us. What what an exciting trip out of the house. Actually, next week's pretty busy. Um, but yeah, I hope you've all had a lovely week and a lovely weekend. And I will see you very soon. Bye. Bye.